This risotto recipe is sponsored by Squarespace, the tool that I use to produce my own professional website in less time than it takes to make risotto, literally. Get your rice in the pan and then start building your site at squarespace.com slash ragusia and get 10% off. The risotto recipes I learned from always told me don't let anything brown in the pan. I arrived at this recipe by disregarding that advice to the best of my ability. First thing is get a pan, and I think a 10-inch pan or thereabouts does a better job than a narrow pot. But it also helps to have tall sides so you don't slosh things around as you're stirring. This tall-sided skillet is my new favorite for many things. Who makes it? Oh my god, it's Chrissy Teigen! Oh my god, it's Chrissy Teigen! Actually, I love Chrissy Teigen. I'll get it on medium-high heat with some olive oil and lay in a chicken thigh. One thigh for two people, I'd say. Boneless is easy easiest, but any bit of dark meat would work. While that's going, I'll chop up one small shallot per person. You could totally do an equivalent amount of onion, maybe a quarter of an onion total. I like shallots because they're single serving and they cook really fast. And I'll peel and chop one carrot per person. I like my risotto very vegetable heavy. If you want a more standard risotto texture, maybe do just one carrot per two people or even less. Cut them into any shape you want, but small pieces, no bigger than these. You need them to be cooked soft by the time the rice is done. Flip your thigh when it's really good and brown. I'll cook the other side just until I'm afraid that my fond is going to burn. Make some room, dump in the veggies, and pull the chicken out. Stir the veggies around, and I'll let at least some of those get really good and brown. Time to think about rice. Arborio is usually the only risotto rice I can get at the grocery store, though in a perfect world, I get Violone Nano. It's creamier, it cooks faster, but Arborio is fine. Just a quarter cup of rice per person, I say. It always feels like it's not enough at this stage, but it is. I'll stir that around and let it sit for a sec. Toasting the rice like this for too long can actually make your finished product less creamy, but I want that nutty browned flavor, so I usually just let the bottom layer of rice get real toasted, and I'll rely on the top layer to provide the creaminess. After a minute or two, you should be very scared that things are going to burn, and it's time to deglaze with white wine. Don't meme me, bro. This is totally traditional. I just put in enough to cover the rice, stir and scrape to deglaze, and it should be almost evaporated within a minute. Next comes chicken stock, and I'm just using a carton. You absolutely do not have to get it simmering in another pan first. The reason to cook risotto in a wide pan is that it'll get the stock real hot, real fast, when you just pour it straight in from the carton. I'll throw in a bay leaf, little pinches of dried sage and thyme, classic roast poultry herbs. A little pepper. Don't go crazy with the pepper. You can really taste it a lot in a risotto. It has been established empirically by many people that you do not have to stir risotto continuously or add the stock in tiny little doses to make it creamy. The creaminess comes from the starch on the surface of the grains and that dissolves readily in liquid. However, I think the traditional method is still useful, especially toward the end of cooking. I'll show you why. For now, I've just poured in enough stock to more than cover the rice, and that can just simmer by itself. Meanwhile, I'll cut up my chicken thigh into little tiny pieces. It's not quite cooked on the inside, and that does not matter because it's going right back in the pan to braise. Stirring really doesn't quote-unquote draw out the starch. I'm just doing it to keep the rice from sticking to the bottom. I'll peel and chop up a few cloves of garlic, nice and fine. I prefer to add that right at the end, otherwise I just don't taste it. That first big dose of stock has been in there about 10 minutes, and I can see the rice starting to go dry. At this point, I'll start adding more stock in tiny little doses. Not because that quote-unquote draws out the starch, but because I don't know how much stock this risotto is going to take. I'm not into doing a recipe with a predetermined formula. I just want to eyeball it. And you can add liquid, but you can't take it away. So I think it pays to do conservative little doses at this stage. This ended up taking two-thirds of a standard 32-ounce carton. You can taste the rice at any time to gauge its doneness. I think that you want to turn the heat off and start wrapping this up when the grains are still a little crunchy. Because by the time you get the last ingredients mixed in, you slap this on a plate and you sit down to eat, the rice will be perfect. But only if you start that process when it's still a little underdone. That rice was in the pan 15 minutes before I started this finishing stage. Garlic is in, then your friend and mine, frozen peas. Frozen solids. So good, so convenient, and they'll help this cool to eating temperature faster. Pull out that bay leaf and toss it. It's sharp. You don't want to eat it. Now is when you traditionally finish with butter and cheese. I am on team tiny bit of butter and giant heap of grated pecorino. 
Taste it for seasoning. You might need more salt depending on how salty your carton stock was and how much cheese you put in. And maybe a little bit more butter. And last thing I do is put in a tiny glug of fresh wine. If you do that right at the end, I think it brightens everything up a lot. And there you go. Pretty stiff texture, like I like it. I don't like soupy risotto, but you do you. You can always add liquid. Now, one thing to consider is that if you want to put in a ton of meat or vegetables in your risotto, like I do, you're going to sacrifice some creaminess. There simply isn't enough rice in there proportionally to make it super creamy. If that bothers you, put in less vegetables. Or do what I suspect many restaurants do and melt in like a whole stick of butter. I'm good with this as is, though. A risotto with the strong flavor of a roast chicken dinner. Super hearty. Love it. And because you don't have to constantly stir risotto as you are cooking it, you really could build your new professional or personal website in the time it takes to make that recipe, as long as you use Squarespace. In addition to having beautiful modern templates for any aesthetic or function, Squarespace has every tool that you could need to make content and transact business on your site. It's got powerful blogging tools to help you share your recipes, your photos, your videos, and Squarespace can help you with audience engagement. You can collect email addresses on your site and then send out newsletters or offers to any unique mailing lists you want to create. And of course, all the e-commerce functions are built right into Squarespace too. You can get a functioning online store up and running in minutes. Get your site started for free at squarespace.com. And when you're ready to publish or buy a domain, go to squarespace.com slash ragusia to get 10% off. And at that point, your risotto should be done. You want to eat it right away. Risotto really is better right after it's cooked. It'll go soft and kind of puddingy real fast as it sits, and reheating it will not reverse that process, which is one reason why homemade risottos are usually way better than what you get at restaurants.